General Eberhardt, Mrs. Eberhardt, Air Commodore Van Haren, Ms. Hurd, Dr. and Ms. Mr. Cutler, honored guests, good afternoon. I am honored to welcome you to Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall as we gather on this, the 75th anniversary of the World War II plane crash at Baker's Creek. This memorial was a long time coming. We dedicated the Baker's Creek Memorial here at Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall for the first time in 2009. This memorial honors the memory of 40 American lives lost in the deadliest airplane crash in the Southwest Pacific Theater during World War II. Secretary of the Army Peter Guerin called the ceremony the closing of one of the Second World War's final chapters. It is fitting that the memorial found its home here, with Arlington National Cemetery serving as a dramatic backdrop. Today we gather to remember the service and lives of these members of the Army Air Corps who lost their lives aboard a B-17C Flying Fortress near Mackay, Queensland, Australia on June 14, 1943. After a much-deserved R&R from the flight in the Pacific, these American patriots boarded their B-17 transport just before dawn to head back to New Guinea. There were six crew members and 35 passengers aboard. The plane took off in a dense fog and for reasons unknown today, it crashed shortly after takeoff. All were killed except for one survivor, Corporal Foy Kenneth Roberts. This memorial is a tribute to the 40 lives lost. The site was selected, as many of you know, next to the Selfridge Gate located just behind me. This gate is named for Lieutenant Thomas Selfridge, the first Army fatality of military-powered flight back in 1908 aboard the Wright Flyer aircraft. Flown by Orville Wright, the flyer crashed when one of the propellers shattered and the plane fell from an altitude of 75 feet in the area of the parking lot just behind you. Back in this, this way. This is a very fitting site and we are proud to host this important memorial. Several years ago, my Uncle Steve and Aunt Betty Walter brought me and my husband John to this exact site and recounted the events of this significant historical event. My Aunt Betty's uncle, Second Lieutenant Jack Ogren, was a member of the crew. He was the navigator. This event today touches me both personally and professionally. I appreciate the opportunity as the commander of this historic joint base to honor the memory of these brave servicemen annually, together with the Baker's Creek family and the Australian Embassy. Before I close, I would like to recognize and thank Dr. Robert Cutler. He is a son of the soldier Captain Sam Cutler, who scheduled the Baker's Creek flight on that fateful day and saw the soldiers off just before the crash. It has been through Dr. Cutler's tireless efforts and those of the Baker Cre Baker's Creek Memorial Association that this memorial rests here today. So we thank you. I would also like to extend a very special thank you to the Embassy of Australia. Thank you, Air Commodore Van Haren and Corporal Kowald. We are honored by your presence today. We are sincerely grateful for you, for you and the ambassador's continued support of this annual ceremony. Thank you, General Eberhardt, for taking the time from your busy schedule to be here and for your ongoing support. And thanks to all of you here today, honored guests, for joining us as we remember these 40 American soldiers and to ensure that this part of American history is not forgotten. We also express gratitude to their families for having made the ultimate sacrifice. Army Strong. Thank you, Colonel Peoples. Please welcome our next speaker, the Air Attaché from the Embassy of Australia in Washington, D.C., Air Commodore Terry Von Herren. Oh, good day, folks. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, it's a great honour for me to be here today to represent, firstly, the, uh, the Head of Mission, the Ambassador, His Excellency Mr. Joe Hockey, but also the Royal Australian Air Force and the people of Mackay in Queensland who look after the other site, our sister site, the memorial site at Baker's Creek. And lastly, the Australian people 
who also share your screen. And what I really want to mention is the special relationship that we have not only with uh, the United States but memory and memorial. And this year we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of what we call mateship. And I like to explain what that means in, in my terms. Now, mateship is a friendship that's formed in adversity. It's a friendship that is often unconditional and it's a friendship which is enduring. It actually goes right back into our DNA. I sometimes say that the uh, first convicts came to Australia uh, as shipmates and by after six months of travel across the oceans of great peril, they had developed made ship. We really celebrate in Australia where we really realised what it was in terms of a value and that's why we celebrate Anzac Day, our first day of memorial. And that's because our boys sailed halfway around the world, stormed the beach, and eight and a half thousand of them died for no real gain. They went there to fight for Kenyan country, they ended up fighting for each other. And that friendship formed an adversary, it was tested day and day again. And they sacrificed their lives for their mates. And of course that's become an enduring quality in the Australian psyche. So I want to actually talk about that in the context of what we're here to do today, and that is to remember the tragedy at Baker's Creek 75 years ago. These young men that we remember today had come to Australia in a great time of, of adversity and peril in the Pacific, and like many other of our uh, friends and mates, the Americans, were there to fight tyranny, but also, in the conscience of Australia, actually defend our nation. And it was truly a tragedy, a great adversary that these 40 men were lost in one air accident in Australia. And we truly understand and feel the gravity of that loss. We also say that mateship is about unconditional friendships. But often having unconditional leads to that sacrifice. And that is the second element here. It's a great tragedy, but we also recognise that these men were sacrificed their lives in a time of war for our survival, for our defence, and for our values of freedom, our value of mateship, and everything else we share between our two countries. And the last element is mateship in our terms is an enduring friendship. And as we celebrate 100 years of mateship, stepping back to the Battle of La Hamel, which was fought on the 4th of July 1918, I can tell you that this memory of the sacrifice of these young men is enduring now 75 years into the future and will endure for evermore. I know the ode is coming up, but we always say at the end of the ode in Australia, lest we forget. And I'd like to finish with, with that term, lest we forget these young men. Thank you. Thank you, Eric Hamandor von Hart. At this time, I would like to ask Ms. Charlotte Hurd, military liaison for the United States Senator Mark Warner, to please step up to the podium. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First, I'd like to extend a happy birth, 243rd birthday to the United States Army. And I'd also like to thank uh, all the veterans and those still in uniform for your service to our nation. Senator Warner could not make it today, but I do have a letter to read on his behalf. Dear friends, I am writing to extend my warmest greetings to all who are gathered for the Baker's Creek Memorial Ceremony at Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall. Today, Americans remember the 40 soldiers who lost their lives in an airplane crash in the Southwest Pacific during World War II 75 years ago. Without hesitation, these American heroes put themselves into harm's way to ensure the welfare and safety of their fellow citizens. We are all indebted to them for their service. We must always remember that the best way to honor those who gave their lives in the past is to continue to support the servicemen and women who are fighting every day for our, name, for our future. I send my best wishes for a fulfilling ceremony. Sincerely, Mark R. Warner, United States Senator.
Thank you, yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, the Chairman and President of the Armed Forces Benefit Association, General Ralph Elbert, U.S. Air Force retired. Thank you very much. Uh, what an honor and a privilege it is for me to participate this, this afternoon. Uh, first of all, thanks, Colonel Peoples, to you and your team for making this a, a ceremony of remembrance that's, that's dignified and is appropriate. And again, the Army's looking a little bit older today. So happy 243rd. Uh, Army strong. America's Army. And I'm very, very proud of it. Commodore, uh, I reinforce what you say, said about the relationship between our two great nations. Uh, obviously, a common birth is uh, colonies of England. Uh, uh, we, our frontiers were settled by people that believed in the same basic values uh, of freedom. Uh, the, uh, the rule of law, and, and and to some degree we have a common language. A common language. Yeah. <clears throat> and when I think about uh, the Fifth Air Force, which I had the pleasure to command, and which uh, operated in this theater of operation, uh, I think of the colors of the Australian flag and Fifth Air Force flag. Both have the, the constellation, the Southern Cross constellation, which Fifth Air Force is very, very proud of. When I think about uh, this human tragedy, the 40 lives lost, I can't help but think about their experiences on r, &R before they returned to New Guinea. The conversations that unfolded, the talk about home, the talk about their farms, their factories, their stores, their shops, their families, their girlfriends, all reflections but also their goals, their dreams, their aspirations. Sadly, goals, dreams, and aspirations that would never be realized. They obviously talked about the war, the war. And they knew that it was going to be a long slog in the Pacific because the European theater of operation took priority. And then the Allies were going to swing their forces to the Pacific and ensure victory. They undoubtedly talked about the Doolittle Raid in April of 42, the Battle of Korra Sea in May of 42, and the turning point of the war by most historians, the Battle of Midway in June, just two weeks or one week prior to this disaster, when we won the Battle of Midway in the first week of June in 1943. <clears throat> so as you think about the, those conversations, and you think about them boarding that Miss EMF, every morning fixing. You had to fix it every morning. It's what we call today a hangar queen. An airplane that doesn't fly a lot. An airplane that doesn't fly a lot. That airplane in the early days of the war, in fact, in December of 1941, returned from a bombing raid with 1,000 plus bullet holes. 1,000 plus bullet holes. So I would offer to you today as a combat veteran that these young men were a victim to enemy fire just like as if there were a gunner on the ground that day. And I'd close by paraphrasing George Patton when he was dedicating a cemetery in Italy. He said, today we should not mourn these men. Rather, we should thank God that such men lived. God bless. Me. Thank you, General Everhart. I am now pleased to introduce the Executive Director of the Baker's Creek Memorial Association, Dr. Robert Cullen. And Senator Bob Dole and former Australian Senator Santo Santoro send their regrets. They're not available to be with us today. On behalf of the Baker's Creek Memorial Association, that's the families and friends of the crash victims from 23 states across the United States, we thank you for your spirit and your leadership in conducting this annual ceremony to affirm the values that those 40 members of the Army Air Corps died for in World War II. 
and to our Australian friends from the U.S. Embassy, from the Australian Embassy, and Colonel Colin Benson, the RSL historian, again with us today from Australia. The 75th commemoration is a significant event in both countries. Ten days ago in Australia, a similar commemoration ceremony was held near the crash site at Baker's Creek, an annual event that the Mackay Regional Council has performed for the past 26 years. We thank you for your continued support for our bilateral national cause to acknowledge the lasting bonds of military security and friendship between our two nations that was forged in New Guinea in 1942 at the Kokoda Trail and still exists today. At this time, I'd like to read from a letter sent by one of the family relatives to me over the past uh, year, who unfortunately is not able to be with us today. My name is Al Freza. Alfredo Enrico Freza was the legitimate birth name of my uncle and my namesake. Tech Sergeant Alfred H. Frezza, who died along with 39 of his fellow soldiers in the plane crash, that now is memorialized in two countries and came to be known as the World War II Baker's Creek Air Crash Disaster. The name Alfred H. Frezza, Americanized as a defense against the discrimination toward foreigners which sadly was so common at that time, was given to me in his honor upon my birth 83 years ago. Because of the wartime circumstances we've come to know, Uncle Alfred's body wasn't returned to our family until 1948. And while I was only three years old at the time, I have a very distinct memory of being present at his casket, which had been placed in the front room of our grandmother's home in Altoona, Pennsylvania. It occurs to me now that my grandmother probably thought about him daily and probably prayed with each memory. I do remember how intensely Grandma smiled when she looked at me and how, when my friends or cousins called me by my nickname, she would say in broken English, No, Bucky, Alfredo's a good name. And it occurs to me, too, that if it were not for the Bob Cutler's desire to memorialize as a tribute to his father, Captain Samuel Cutler, Army Air Corps, with the forces in Australia, who, as Bob has stated, carried the hard memory of being the man who closed the door on that faded aircraft, and to call Benson's curiosity to find the names of those fallen soldiers who were passengers in that plane, I would not ever have learned anything more about Uncle Alfred than the title that I've come to know afterwards. But there is even more for which to be grateful. An additional measure of pride has evolved from all of this a pride that our uncle was part of a group of very brave soldiers who delivered supplies to an even braver Australian soldiers on the ground who fought against the Japanese saving Australia from enemy invasion. And there's a personal pride and a sense of belonging to something unique and important each time the Baker's Creek crash ceremony anniversary is commemorated. On behalf of our large family, beginning with Alfredo's remaining sibling, Arthur, who's now 89, down through all the offspring who still are learning the story, our sincere thanks to Bob and Carl for all that they have done over the years to passionately maintain the memorial. 
my most crisp salute to them and to all who selflessly assisted them over the years. My sincere thanks, good blessings to you all. Alfred H. Frezza, Princeton, New Jersey. Like other patriotic commemorations, we believe it important, indeed our duty, to pay tribute and to remember the historic event. The unique feature of this tragedy not simply is the number of deaths, but rather the extraordinary loss that occurred to so many American families and Australian friends simultaneously. Some good news. Today I am pleased to report that the 40th and final casualty family has been located. Last week, one of our volunteer genealogy researchers, Francesca Camaro, in California, working with another internet sleuth, Sylvia Lay in Wisconsin, reported making positive contact with family relatives of the late PFC Frederick C. Sweet, the last of the 40 Bakers Creek crash victim families to be located. Looks like we're getting close to saying mission accomplished. Please stand and welcome Claire Gailey, the daughter of the late Lieutenant Colonel C.K. Gailey and former board member of the Bakers Creek Memorial Association, and Colonel Colin E. Benson, Mackay RSL historian from Australia. Claire will read the names of the fallen as we place the flowers of remembrance in the green basket side of the memorial, after which Colonel Benson will recite the ode, a traditional battlefield benediction. Anyone wishing to place a flower, please step forward and take one from my wife Sarah to your right and place it in the green basket next to the monument. Thank you again, Dr. Culler.